All right, so in this video, we're going to do a sample of different SH, SAT problems that you might see on the test. Now, these problems are not focusing on any particular area. They're going to kind of hop around, and they're meant to help just kind of refresh you and get you started um, on studying for this test. So we're going to kind of hop around to different levels of questions. Let's start with this one. Here, we're just adding two negative numbers and then subtracting a negative number. We work from left to right. What's negative 4 and, and negative 8? What's well, negative 12? Then we're going to subtract negative 3 from that, which if you remember or have seen this before, that is the same thing as adding 3. If we're sitting at negative 12 on the number line and we add 3, we'll end up at negative 9. So there, we're just uh, getting a refresher on adding and subtracting with negative numbers. Here, I like this question because they tell us that ice cream is $7.60 per gallon. They want to know what the cost of one pint of the ice cream would be, and that's, of course, assuming that the same rate applies. I guess what you have to know here is how many pints are in a gallon, and that's not something they might tell you. So you might want to refresh yourself on, on simple measurements like that. Uh, there are eight, eight pints in a gallon. So 8 pints equals 1 gallon. And let me get back to why I like this question. Uh, remember, this is a multiple choice test. So if you if you spent $7.60 on a gallon of ice cream, one pint, right, will be one eighth of that. So that gallon is split into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little pints. So really what you do to find out what one pint would be is take $7.60 and divide it into eight groups. And, and why I like this question is because I know right away the answer has to be E. Without doing any calculations, I'm just using a little bit of simple reasoning here, which is that if we have $7.60 and split it into eight groups, each group will be less than a dollar. All of these amounts here are more than a dollar. And what I mean is, let's let's say that it was eight dollars per gallon. Well, what would one pint be then? It would be eight dollars divided by eight. Every pint would be a dollar. But the cost of ice cream here is below eight dollars. So whatever we have is going to be below eight divided into eight groups. Each group will be less than a dollar. If the cost of ice cream was over eight dollars, and we divide that amount into eight groups. We know that every group will have be more than a dollar. But again, the price per gallon is only 760 divided by 8. You have to get less than 1. So we don't there's no need here to do long division. And that's just a reminder for you that you don't always need to get stuck in a process of the mathematics, but try to take a step back and look for the logic to solve the problem. Here, um, another another good question. I think representative of the types of questions you might see on a test. They tell us that three yards of string cost D dollars. What is the cost of two yards of string? So I think I'm going to say, let me rewrite this first of all, say X dollars because I wrote X here in the, in the choices. So, so how do we do that? Think about it for a moment. If you, had, if you knew what the cost of three yards of, of string was, well, to find two yards, what I would first do is take the cost, which is x, I would divide it by three. So whatever the cost is, let's say it was uh, $6 for three yards. But dividing it by three, that would tell me, oh, every yard is $2. And the idea, of course, being that we're taking three yards and dividing it by three, that gives us what one yard is. That's the first step, so x divided by three. And then I would double that because two yards of string is double the cost of one yard of string. So, for example, in this situation, if one yard was two dollars, I'd multiply by two, and I would realize that two yards of string cost four dollars. Now, these are we're representing the answer in terms of algebra. So, the first thing we did was take our x, divide it by three, and then multiply it by two. Well. Do we see that here? And, and the answer is yes. Right? We see it right in choice A. Although it doesn't look friendly at first, to realize that x divided by 3 
can be written as x over 3. These are the same thing. And that's what choice E is. And E is out because it only shows us how to find one yard of string. But then we multiply this by, by 2. And with fractions, of course, if you multiply 2 by x over 3, that's the same thing as 2x over 3. Same idea. So here, A is the answer. We'll do one more in this video. Um, here's a triangle problem, right? The larger acute angle, right? acute being less than 90, in a right triangle is two times the measure of the smaller angle. What is the measure, or what is the smaller angle? Well, remember that a right triangle is a triangle with exactly one right angle. And that means exactly one 90 degree angle. And here, we're, we're trying to find an acute angle. And 90 degrees is not acute, so B is out. So there's only one, two, three, four choices left. So what do we do? Well, think about the right triangle. Altogether, it would have 180 degrees. And the two acute angles sit right here. So whatever they add up to, it will, it will add up to 90. Why? Because, well, we already have this 90 degree angle taken up right here. If altogether is 180, take 90 away. There's only 90 degrees left to share between our two acute angles. So we know that the two acute angles, whatever they are, have to add up, right? Add them up, and we would get 90. But what we're told, of course, is that one of them is double the other. So one of them we can say is x, and the other is twice that, or 2x. And if we add them up, we should get 90 degrees. So we can use this equation to solve for x and find the smaller angle. If we had two x's and three x's, what do we get? Well, we get three x. That equals 90. So now, divide both sides by three, and x equals 30. And, you know, be careful here, because sometimes they might ask you, what is the measure of the larger of the two angles? And they would put 30 there as a choice, but then your answer would be 60, because the larger acute angle is double the smaller angle. All right.